So when we talk about sex relationships and dating, we tend to leave one big portion out, and that's the spiritual self, right? The spiritual self, the well-being, health, image. And so that's what this panel is here for. So I'm, I'm very interested to see what they have to say. So on our panel, we have Ms. Dina um, Aluwalia. Yay! Yay. Right. Okay. <laughs> Who is, uh, uh, her title is Intersections uh, Match Founder and President. And then in the middle, we have Quinn um, Estate. Yeah, Estate, yeah. who's a holistic health coach. And then on the end, we have Sarah Shofi, who is a life and relationship coach. So, ladies, take it away. Well, welcome, everyone. So, what's this panel about? Um, it's really about evolving into the best version of your authentic self. So, as a matchmaker and dating coach, I listen to guys all the time about what they're looking for, what they're seeking. And um, hands down, from my experience, is hands down. One of the best ways to attract a really great guy, a guy with real potential in your life, is to actually start leading the most meaningful, fulfilling, happy life that you can right now. Not waiting for him, but right now. And not only seeds, but actually create opportunities to really you know, evolve into the best version of the authentic stuff. So, and you know, how incredibly empowering is that? But that's what you need to do. You need to live your best life now to attract, you know, that guy into your life. I think that's incredibly empowering. And, um, you know, play to your strengths, play to your values, and create a life. Um, you know, in the dating world, there can be so many externals that are they're really out of your control. Your power lies in the internal. Um, I truly, truly believe that. And, um, you know, your power is in the choices you make, decisions you're making on how to create your life, um, your, the beliefs you allow into your consciousness, and the meaning you choose to assign to your experiences, both past you know, and in the present. So let's leverage the sense of power of the internal, and that's what we're trying to do with this panel. And with that, I'll turn it over to Sarah. Sorry, Sarah. Yeah, um, so I think that's right on target with what Jasmina said. Um, so my topic is well-being today. When we say well-being, what is it that we really need? Um, I can tell you when I first started coaching and I first heard this um, this concept, it's like my well-being, okay, so I eat right, I get enough sleep, I you know take care of my nails, like I I know I don't drink too much, I'm good. And um, and then as I explored it more, I really realized that there's so much more to your well-being. It's really about the whole picture of your internal life and also some, some of your external life. So, um, so it's really about physically, emotionally, spiritually, financially. It's about your environments, your home environment, your car environment, your work environment. All of these things are contributing to your well-being every single day. So I really um, invite you guys to consider well-being as a, as a very broad, holistic concept. And um, so the, the proposition that I have for you is that when your well-being is handled on a very high level, when you are taking care of all these various elements of your life, um, that that is the source for unparalleled results for you. Um, in dating, in relationships, in love, in work, in play, in everything. Um, so if I can leave you with, with one thing today, that's it. That the well-being, your well-being is the source of unparalleled result, results in your life. Um, and that when it's being handled at a very high level, you will experience new results and new possibility. When it's being neglected, that will have a negative impact on you in a lot of different areas. So, for example, like, how is it for you when you don't get enough sleep? How does the day go? <laughs> Horrible. Yeah, it's kind of like one thing after another. You know, you wake up late, and then there's not enough shampoo, and then you wake up so late, and then your muffin man is not there anymore, and it's like this whole series of events. So, so there's that, you know, how does it go for you when you stop exercising and you put on a few pounds? Like, we all know how that is. It's like, it's not just what's going on here. It's like what's going on here. It's all connected. So, um, so I want you to think about in your life, 
like what are some areas where you, your well-being is handled? You know, maybe you are great at sticking to your bedtime, you know, and, and waking up early. Maybe you're great at um, having spiritual practice. Maybe you do meditation or yoga. So we've all got some things handled, right? And then we've all got those things that we don't have handled. So I want you to just think in your seats to yourselves, like some areas, physically, emotionally, mentally, in your lifestyle, in your environment, where there's like what I call a power leak, where you're not handling something, whether it's your finances, your diet, um, you're, you're afraid to confront someone, a friend, you know, or you're maybe, you're not having enough social activity, you're not getting enough alone time. Something that's not handled. I just want you to think of that in your seats, and we'll come back to that later. Um, the other thing I want to talk about is ways that we sabotage our well-being. There are some ways that are very obvious. So, you know, binge eating, either eating too much, or skipping meals, not eating enough. It's not just about your body, right? That's gonna have an effect on your mind, on the whole, on your whole person. Um, the sleep thing, that's a big one for people. Not getting enough sleep, constantly going to bed late, you know, watching TV till two in the morning when you could have gone to bed at 11, you know, stuff like that. So th those are really obvious. Um, there's uh, not exercising, spending more money than you have. These are a lot of ways where you're, and these are part of your well-being. These are some obvious ways. The, the less obvious ways that you can sabotage it, um, just some examples. So I know for me, it's, a very, it's very important for me to be outside, be in nature, breathe fresh air, see water, and I work from home. And so I noticed, like, some days I would not leave my apartment from the time I woke up until, like, 6 o'clock at night. Or sometimes I wouldn't even leave, like, if I didn't have an event or something that night. Like, and that's not okay. It's not okay for my well-being. So in that way, you know, not going outside was a way that I was sabotaging my well-being. It's really simple. It's really easy to fix. Um, other ways that you could be sabotaging it, clutter, you know, having a cluttered space, having a messy apartment or a messy workspace, that is impacting your mind. I know, I know, you know, what happens for me when I see something that is messy, I, I, I kind of give up on the spot, <laughs> oh my God. And, I, and it's something I have to ignore. So I'm actually putting more effort into ignoring, not cleaning something, than actually doing it. That's affecting my well-being. That's affecting my motivation in other areas. Um, you know, other things, not expressing anger. It's actually really important to express anger. Um, it's also really important to express gratitude. It's really important to experience joy. So some ways, some of the sort of sneakier ways that we may be sabotaging our well-being are by not doing any of those things. Just kind of putting it on autopilot and cruising and thinking, I'm fine, no big dramas, no big breakdowns. Well, I've got news for you. If you're not handling your well-being, you will have a breakdown of some sort. Whether it's um, you get sick, you um, maybe get depressed or have anxiety, so these are some of the ways that we sabotage ourselves. And there's also all types of excuses, right? Like, um, I don't have enough time. <laughs> this is a really funny one to me. It's like, I don't have enough time to take care of myself. I don't have enough time to create a budget so that I know how exactly how much money it's okay for me to spend each month. Instead, I'll just keep spending, spending, and, and get to the bottom of the barrel every month and just speak by. So not, there's excuses, not having enough time, I'll do it later. I've got news for you. Again, there is no later. There is no other time except right now. And if you're waiting for some time in the future when you'll be more ready, um, chances are it's not going to come. You actually have to choose your readiness now in the moment and choose you're going to handle something now in the moment. Um, so I want, I want you guys to just do like a mini visualization in your seats. You can close your eyes if you 
want. I want you to imagine you with your well-being exquisitely handled. Physically, emotionally, financially, you're well-rested. You are organized. Your budget and your weight are on target. You've gotten a massage. You love your haircut. You're hydrated. You cut sugar out of your diet. You just finished a great book. You just had a fun brunch with your friends or a fantastic first kiss. You look and feel fabulous. So from this place, when you're handling the things that you're not currently handling, what is possible for you? And what can you create from that space? Who can you attract? When you're at your best, you're going to be attracting much different people than you are attracting when you're like at your mediocreest or at your, you know, at your I'm fineest. Like I'm fine is not your greatness. So what I'm inviting you to consider is that taking care of your well-being on all these multiple levels is an access. It's not a magic pill, but it's an access, an on-ramp to it's an access point for your being, your highest and best self. So, um, and I, I want to I wanna give you an example. I, I recently attended a, a well-being workshop put on by one of my colleagues, a fellow coach, and um, he asked us to choose one thing that we would do for a month. And he told this great story about how for a month he, he was having all these sleeping issues and energy issues, and for a month he got up every morning and went running. Not really, not like 10 miles, just like he ran for a half hour every day. And I got inspired and I got up the next day and I did that. 6 a.m., I set my alarm, it was cold, so it was early and it was cold. Two things I hate. And, <laughs> and I was like, I'm doing this, like it's on. I mean, it, me it means a lot to me to actually get my butt up out of bed at an hour that I don't usually do it and try something new. So I got up that day, I went for a run, and I was like so energized and so happy. A New York was asleep, you know, it was kind of like, it was so quiet, so peaceful, sunny, and um, I have to tell you, I generated so much joy from doing that I got two new clients that day. So that's just to give you an example of what's possible for you. So to bring it all back, I want you guys to look um, in, in all these different areas and pick one thing. One thing you will commit to taking on every single day for the next 30 days. It does not have to be huge. It can be really small. Um, one of the people in my workshop, she did she did 90 seconds of squats every day, and the result she said she transformed her relationship to her own strength. So I want you guys to look in the physical realm, thinking about sleep, what you're eating, your hygiene, um, your exercise, going outside, taking time off. That's another way that we sabotage our well-being. We don't take time off. So look in the physical realm, emotionally. Are you, do you have enough sort of social connection? Do you have enough, enough physical connection? Are you getting touched enough? It doesn't have to be a romantic touch. It can just be hugs. Um, experiencing joy, play, laughter. Spiritual, there's prayer, meditation. Um, mentally, like maybe you really are into reading or crossword puzzles and you just never make time for it. In, um, let's see, in your lifestyle, budgeting. Creating a budget, getting your finances in order, and, and also just larger life goals, creating goals that are based on your values. That's kind of a big one. So I ask you to really look in your life. Pick one thing that's not currently handled, that you always say, oh, I really wish I could be more consistent with this. This is your opportunity. Pick one thing, do it for the next 30 days. You all have a in your goodie bag, I want to hear an outro. Okay. <laughs> Hi, I'm Quinn Asti. I'm a health and wellness um, So I'm, I'm a health and wellness coach, um, and basically what that means is I work with people 
um, to help them transform their relationship with food. And it just seemed really, we're talking about relationships in general today, so I'm really going to talk about that relationship that we have with food. I work primarily with women who have body image concerns or who are emotional eaters. I don't know if anyone identifies with that. Um, but it's a really complex and tumultuous relationship that we have. I mean, it goes back to childhood. It, it, as complex as the relationships that we have with our parents, our friends, our siblings. It's something that people use oftentimes for comfort. Um, well, I find a lot of people use food to replace something else. And um, so that's really what I help people do is kind of work through where that relationship stems from and how to how to really rework it from the ground up. So I mean I I work with people on their diet as well, so I could stand up here and give you a bunch of the diet tips. But I think that most of you know all of them. The thing is a lot of people know exactly what to do when it comes to health and wellness. Like intuitively we know we're all very really intelligent people and we know what you need to do. So we can talk more we can talk more about some of the you know, the, your body how your body uh, ceases to produce a hormone called leptin when you don't get enough sleep, which cuts off um, the messages from your stomach to your brain and actually tell them, stop telling you when you're full. There's a real scientific explanation. Um, so it's really, really important to get your sleep, everyone. And it's really, really important to eat breakfast because it sets your metabolic tone for the day and that's what's going to get your body going. And if you're eating a lot of sugar in the morning, you're going to set yourself up on this blood sugar roller coaster that's keeping you crashing and feeling terrible all day long. So eat breakfast, everyone. And um, you know, we can talk about the difference between a healthy lifestyle and being on a diet. Because they're two really different things that have been gotten confused a lot in the media where people think that they're on a diet and they're being healthy when in fact a lot of diet food is really, really bad for you. Um, so I encourage you, you know, if you are what you eat, um, look at what's in your food, look at the ingredients that you're putting in your body. Um, the same way that you are what you eat, you are who you date, you are who you spend time with, these people wear off on you, they become part of you, they get into your psyche, and they make you believe, they create certain beliefs about who you are. So being really aware, it all really ties back and forth. It's, it's um, consuming food and, and consuming culture, uh, what you read, what you watch, the magazines that you're reading, the TV shows that you're watching. Um, can have a really negative impact on our well-being in general by making us think that we should see a certain way and look a certain way. Um, and we'll try to get us wrapped up into this idea of dieting when, um, you know, it doesn't matter how much kale you eat, you'll never be taller. You'll never, <laughs> you know, so there are certain things where it's like, I'll see people with these ideas of who they want to look like and who they want to become. And, um, the most important thing in terms of well-being is really, really, really it's changing the conversation in your own head and by coming to that place of self-acceptance. Um, your body is never going to transform entirely. It's only going to be a different version of what you already have. You know, if, if your legs are your legs and your arms are your arms and they might be a little bigger or a little smaller, but finding that place of love and acceptance is really the most important thing that you do instead of waiting for acceptance from other people. Um, a lot of times I give clients the assignment of looking in the mirror, and I encourage all of you guys to do this because this is a great exercise. Looking in the mirror and just telling yourself that you love yourself or grabbing onto that part that maybe you haven't always loved and appreciate. You know, grabbing onto your belly and just being like, I know you're here to teach me something. I love you so much. You know, because your body is it's a part of you. So choosing to love yourself and choosing to change the conversation are the most important things that you can really do for yourself. Um, I do it all the time. And, and it really, you know, like we, talked, like we were just talking about, it's, it, it takes time. It's, it might take 30 to 90 days to really, really change what you're thinking. But consistency um, is really going to pay off. So um, just a couple other little things. You know, I, I like to say that you know, when it comes to diet, there's no one diet that works for everyone. Just like there's no one um, relationship that works for everyone. There's no one man out there for everyone. There's no such thing as a perfect man, and there's no such thing as a perfect diet. So really finding your own 
what works for you is hugely important as well. Really looking at what you want, what you need, um, what's going to best nourish you. Um, you know, deciding and like looking at what you want and cultivating that, thinking about it every day, thinking about what are your non-negotiables in life and in, in, in your lifestyle. You know, what do you need? Do you need to get in bed at 11 o'clock at night? Do you need to have a, a man that um, is going to be emotionally there for you? Like, what are the things that are really non-negotiable? And stick to it. And when people, you know, listen, when people reveal themselves, listen. Um, and and be aware of diet, that, um, of what you're putting in your body. Um, also, when it comes to food, I think one of the most important things is really asking, when you, when you sit down and eat, this is one of the last things I'll leave you um, really asking yourself if you're hungry. I know a lot of times people will just rush through their meals, eat whatever is available, eat what's like at their fingertips, instead of really thinking about if they're hungry, if they're really hungry for what they're about to consume. Um, and if the answer is no, you're not really hungry for that, find out what you are really hungry for. Because a lot of times people use cravings for something sweet, something good, something satisfying, or something with um, your kind of golden cells, with something else. So really looking at what you actually crave in life and, and do that. You know, there are so many ways that we can fill our lives with so many good things that are not.